In this training, we will explain how to add data flows to our product diagram. When making security decisions for our projects, Areas Risk can assist us. The diagramming module enables us to create data flow diagrams illustrating how data flows within our product. In this training, we will incorporate data flows into our diagram. These data flows reveal how data moves within our product and can help in spotting potential security risks. As the name already suggests, a data flow represents the flow of data throughout our product. This visualization helps us comprehend how data is processed and transmitted and helps us fine-tune the underlying threat model. Data flows also signal to the threat model how a source component is connected to a destination component. Adding data flows also allows us to inject automation into our threat model. This automation allows us to perform actions like mitigating threats or identifying new threats within our threat model. This is especially relevant when a data flow crosses between trust zones, for example from a trusted partner onto the internet. Additionally, data flows can update the countermeasure status for any related data flow threats, for instance, changing them from being recommended to required. Let's get to Areas Risk to demonstrate how to add data flows to our diagram. In our hotel booking example, let's enhance the diagram by adding the data flows involved when information is transmitted from the hotel booking customer, the origin, to the hotel booking web service, the destination. Let's begin by hovering the mouse over the hotel booking customer component. As we do this, blue X's, called connection points, appear around the component. Simply click one of these X's and while holding the mouse button, drag in the direction of the hotel booking web service component. As we reach the destination, we see that it will also show these connection points. Release the mouse and the two components are connected. The data flow itself is terminated by two green circles with a white X inside. This denotes that the data flow is drawn from connection point to connection point. Let's delete this data flow and explore a second method to connect two components. With the flow selected, press delete on your keyboard or alternatively, right click it and choose delete from the context menu. When hovering over a component, we see arrows pointing outward on the 12, 3, 6 and 9 o'clock positions. Clicking and dragging from either of those, the data flow is attached in a more flexible and dynamic way. We can already see this when moving the mouse around. The data flow is now always drawn, pointing away from the center of the component, rather than being fixed to one single connection point. As we hover over the hotel booking web service component, we observe a blue halo around the component. When releasing the mouse button, we can see that the data flow is now terminated by blue circles containing a white circle inside. Connecting through the axis or using the arrows doesn't affect the threat model itself, however, it does provide greater flexibility when repositioning components. As we drag components around, we observe that the data flow seamlessly connects the hotel booking customer component to the hotel booking web service. This happens without the data flows visually crossing over those components. The origin of the data flow gracefully follows the contours of both the customer component and the server component. This approach ensures that our diagram remains organized and less tangled, facilitating easier component rearrangement when needed. In the same way, using the arrows, add a data flow from the web service to the database. This will help us visually depict the process of customer data being transmitted and ultimately stored in our SQL database. Incorporating Areas Risk data flows may introduce additional threats. To identify these threats, we navigated to the Threats view and enable Flatten Threat view. When enabling the Source column, we can pinpoint threats that have been generated by the Data Flow Rules engine. For instance, if there's a data flow connecting the SQL database as the destination, it becomes vulnerable to SQL attack threats. Further guidance on how to address these threats will be covered in a separate training. Returning to our diagram, we should include the specific data that flows through the data connections. To do this, we right-click on the data flow and choose Data Flow Details. Within this dialog window, we could rename the data flow, assign data flow tags, and select data assets from the available list. In our upcoming training session, we will go into the significance of these actions and provide an explanation of how this works. In this training, we've gathered three key insights. Data flow diagram creation generates a threat model. 
Data flows visually illustrate the path of data within our product. Analyzing data flows enhances our comprehension of our product and could lead to the identification of additional threats in our threat model.